As we eagerly await the release of Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania, which will see the title heroes go up against the multiversal time traveler Kang the Conqueror, I will be ranking my picks for the top 10 greatest Ant-Man villains from the comics, ones who have fought the two main incarnations of the hero, Hank Pym and Scott Lang. Like always, these are my choices, so if I miss any characters you would have included on your list, just leave them in the comment section below. Let's begin. To start off my list at number 10, I've chosen one of the earlier villains of the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym, named the Scarlet Beetle. It debuted in Tales to Astonish number 39, and was a beetle mutated by radiation that had grown to the size of a human using stolen Pym particles. It could command other insects telepathically, and planned on taking over the world with them, attacking power sources, military bases, and making political figures sick with insect bites. The Scarlet Beetle is an absurd character, but a memorable one at the same time. It's a villain that pops into my mind whenever I think of Ant-Man. Moving on to number 9 with The Voice, a former radio announcer with an unconvincing voice named Jason Craig, who gained the ability to use his voice to make anyone listening to it believe everything he says. After ionized atoms from an atomic laboratory traveled through his microphone, Craig would use his powers to influence New Yorkers, turning them against Ant-Man and viewing him as a villain. Ant-Man would defeat him, force him to correct his error, and tell the citizens that Ant-Man is in fact a hero, but Ant-Man does so by threatening to kill Craig with a concealed gun. It was a prop one, not real, but still, doesn't feel like something a superhero should do. Ant-Man would also cover his microphone with microbes that caused severe laryngitis and destroy the voice's voice, which is why in later appearances he would have a different costume with speakers mounted on his shoulders that amplified his weakened voice. Next up at number 8 is Anthony Masters, Taskmaster. This character has been on many of my villain lists and will probably be on many more in the future. He's a really cool character, can replicate any physical skill he witnesses using what he refers to as photographic reflexes and bank them all in his mind. He has fought several Marvel superheroes over the years, and Earth's mightiest heroes as well, the Avengers. In the Astonishing Ant-Man series from 2015, Taskmaster is sent to kill the second Ant-Man, Scott Lang, by one of his arch-enemies, multi-millionaire Darren Cross, using the power broker's app called Hench. The app allowed wealthy people to hire supervillains to do their bidding. Anyways, during their fight in a warehouse, Taskmaster gets grabbed by a fist made up entirely of ants. Scott Lang was influencing, and counters it using a special device that he brought with him that creates a sword from thousands of paper clips in boxes nearby. It was a crazy visual, paper clips being turned into a weapon like that, so quickly, but an awesome visual nonetheless. And speaking of crazy visuals, a fight between Taskmaster and Hawkeye back in the early 80s led to that iconic moment when Scott Lang attached himself to one of Hawkeye's arrows. At number 7, we have a very new character named Macrothrax, who debuted in the Ant-Man series from 2020. He's a representative of the three bug lords of the Savage Land, named Fethira, Vetrock, and Chromatrix who rule over various insect types. Macrothrax is a form of insect creature himself, and intends on taking over the earth, killing all of humanity with an insect army. Macrothrax leads humanoid creatures created from swarms of hornets, silkworms, and beetles, named Vespa, Thread, and Tusk, that utilize the same method of formation that the Spider-Man villain Swarm uses with bees, who also makes an appearance in that story as an enemy and later an ally of Ant-Man. I think Macrothrax's design is pretty cool, and I love the idea of the three insect gods essentially. They threaten the entire Earth, all of humanity. There are some big stakes involved. Moving on to number 6, 
with the irredeemable Ant-Man. Eric O'Grady was a low-level agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. before he stole a prototype Ant-Man suit designed by Hank Pym. Though he would try his hand at being a superhero at first, he ended up doing more harm than good, not having a firm grasp on the Ant-Man suit's full capabilities. Eric O'Grady had more interest in using them for selfish and creepy reasons, like stealing money or spying on women in the shower. O'Grady would join the ranks of the Thunderbolts and later the Secret Avengers. Despite his irredeemable label, as a Secret Avenger, O'Grady would try to redeem himself, somewhat, during a battle with the synthetic androids known as the Descendants. His helmets would be damaged and begin leaking Pym particles, limiting his ability to use his suit's size-altering powers. He would be killed in the pursuit, but not before making sure an innocent child was safe. Following his death, O'Grady would be replaced with an evil cybernetic life model decoy who went by the name of the Black Ant with a pretty cool redesigned costume to boot, I gotta say. The LMD would be sent on various missions, being employed by several other supervillains such as Doctor Doom, The Hood, and Hydra, just to name a few. Eric O'Grady and his life model decoy Black Ant are both darker reflections of Ant-Man, using the Pym particles for evil rather than good. Eric O'Grady is of course the lesser of the two evils, and even partnered up with Hank Pym at one point, who became a male version of the Wasp. Apart from a brief disagreement the two had in that story, to my knowledge, O'Grady and the real Ant-Man have never actually fought before in the comics, not by themselves. I could be wrong though. Regardless, O'Grady's actions as well as the actions of his LMD counterpart, Black Ant, do tarnish the reputation of the original Ant-Man, which is why they are both on my list. Next, at number 5, is the mutant David Cannon, codenamed Whirlwind. He has the power to spin his body at subsonic speeds, without losing his ability to see, speak, and most impressively, interact with objects. He can use his powers to create tornadoes, throw projectiles at lethal speeds, or generate strong jet streams to propel himself or others. In his earlier appearances against Ant-Man and the Wasp, he went by the name of the Human Top, kinda lame, before it was later changed to Whirlwind, along with an upgrade made to his costume. Some stories even have him wear saw blades on his forearms, to do even more damage when spinning himself. Whirlwind would end up becoming a member of the supervillain group The Masters of Evil, all three versions, the ones led by Baron Zemo, Ultron, and Egghead. For a while, Whirlwind also posed as the chauffeur of Janet Van Dyne, named Charles Matthews, in order to steal her fortune, and later even try to win over her love, after becoming obsessed with her. At number 4 we have Doctor Doom. We all know who he is and what his deal is by now, especially if you've watched enough of my videos. He makes this list due to his appearance in the Avengers Children's Crusade storyline, where he would absorb a portion of Scarlet Witch's powers, that of a Nexus being, and become godlike with abilities that rivaled the Beyonder and the Cosmic Cube. Doom would be confronted by the combined force of the Avengers, Young Avengers, and X-Men, and Scott Lang's daughter Cassie, going by the name of Stature, would be killed by an energy blast. Doom's power would overwhelm him and destroy his body, which left Ant-Man even more distraught while clutching his daughter's body in his arms, wondering how something like this could even happen. Thankfully, Cassie would later be resurrected through a combination of the Pym particles in her body and the magic of Doctor Doom, who had wanted to redeem himself for past atrocities. Next up at number 3 is the devious criminal mastermind Egghead, real name Elias Starr. He's a brilliant scientist with an egg-shaped head, 
who is highly knowledgeable in engineering and robotics. He has used various machines and inventions to destroy the life of Ant-Man over the years, with his burning hatred for the hero intensifying after each defeat he has suffered, and he's suffered quite a lot of them. He led a version of the Masters of Evil that went up against the Avengers, and would play a role in upgrading another Ant-Man villain, Darren Cross. Though Elias did die, among the pages of Avengers number 229, the result of one of Hawkeye's arrows getting stuck inside the barrel of an energy gun he fired, he would be resurrected decades later with a Rejuvatec serum. Moving on to number 2, we have Yellow Jacket, a name that envelops a few characters within Ant-Man stories, two of which I'm going to group together here, just because I can, so you'll have to live with it. The first Yellow Jacket was the first Ant-Man, Hank Pym. In many ways, his greatest enemy was himself. With his mind all a flutter due to self-esteem issues and his troubled relationship with his then fiance Janet Van Dyne, inhaling chemicals in a lab accident would alter his brain and cause him to create a villainous persona named Yellow Jacket. He would recover from the chemical mixture, but his personal issues and behavior would snowball and put a strain on his relationship with his wife and teammates, eventually getting him expelled from the Avengers for a time. The other Yellow Jacket is a villain of the second Ant-Man, Scott Lang, named Darren Cross, the CEO and founder of Cross Industries. He had been diagnosed with a rare heart condition, and the experimental pacemaker placed in his body would mutate him, augmenting his strength. This mutation would cause his heart to burn out rather rapidly though, forcing him to go through heart transplant after heart transplant to replace them like worn-out batteries. The donors for these hearts were abducted homeless people from the slums. Eventually, Cross would go after Scott Lang's daughter Cassie for her heart, as it was filled with Pym particles and would be able to survive his mutation. During a resulting battle with Lang, Pym particles would enter Cross's bloodstream and cause him to shrink down uncontrollably. In order to fight the effects of them with the help of Egghead, Cross would later steal a prototype Yellow Jacket battle armor created by Hank Pym, and this newer incarnation of the Darren Cross character as Yellow Jacket was heavily influenced by his appearance in the 2015 Ant-Man film in the MCU, but you know what? That's fine. I'm glad they made this change in the comics. I like this version of Yellow Jacket. It's the best. The most interesting. And at number one, as my pick for the greatest Ant-Man villain, I have chosen the highly dangerous artificial intelligence Ultron, who is constantly improving its robotic body to grow stronger, more efficient, in its undying mission to destroy humanity. I've spoken about this character many times before. Ultron had been created by the original Ant-Man, Hank Pym, using his own brain patterns. It would rebel and develop an Oedipus complex, hating its father and having a romantic interest in its mother, Pym's wife, Janet Van Dyne, the Wasp. The relationship between Ultron and Hank Pym is very compelling, like a twisted father and son relationship. Ultron is in many ways an extension of Pym, an extension of his personality, his ego, his hunger for respect and validation, even his darker and more violent side which we have seen pop up here and there throughout the years. Ultron is a mirror image of Pym, all of his flaws put together into one really bad robot. He's his greatest achievement in a scientific sense, but also his greatest failure. And with that, that concludes another one of these top 10s. I want to thank you all for watching, and I hope you enjoyed the video. If so, show your support to me and my channel by subscribing, hitting that bell icon to be notified of future content I release, and become a producer over on Patreon.com if you can. You can join for as little as $1 per month. I will see you all in the next one. Take care, stay safe, and always stay nerdy.